Welcome to the Unicon Open Source Support Open Aquila Briefing for um, third quarter. All right, for the agenda today, we're going to be going through some community news. We'll talk about the sustaining engineering efforts that Unicon did in Q3. Um, there's some other highlights and updates that we wanted to touch on. Then we'll uh, talk about a, just a feature highlight of just you know something that's interesting about one of the open source features that came out. Uh, we will have a community spotlight, talk about some upcoming events, and then we will open it up for any questions or answers. Um, feel free to use the chat uh, to post questions as we go along, and um, we can stop if need be and, and talk about them. For the presenters, um, um, my name is Chris Beach. I am the Unicon Open Aquila Tech Lead, and I'm a software developer here at Unicon. For our community spotlight today, um, we're pleased to have Jonathan Sweeten here. He is a uh, system admin for the NCCCS um, group, and he is the NC Law Administrator, which is uh, a an Aquila install in North Carolina. Hi, everybody. For the community news, uh, we have started to have Open Aquila community developer meetings. Uh, the purpose here is to bring together folks that actively work on or are interested in becoming um, contributors to Open Aquila projects uh, for an informal discussion. Right? There's a rough agenda, but if there's any technical questions that you're having, um, especially in terms of um, you know, how do I develop a fella? How would I get into that? Um, this is this is a great place to um, to come join and and get to know the team or get to know the community rather. Uh, we are having it every other month, uh, the first Thursday of the month um, in the evening uh, Central Time, and that's to allow the Australian folks. Um, it's going to be their um, their first Friday. The next meeting is going to be in November. Um, uh, when we share the slides, you'll have access to this link. Uh, but we have the minutes from the last meetings, the last meeting linked here. Um, and some of the discussion highlights that we touched on, you know, the Blackboard building block that we will go ahead and talk a little bit more on later in this uh, briefing. Uh, we had a, a bit of a review on the Google Material Design UI and how that's going. We talked a bit about the scripting API and then about the Docker efforts. So, you know, it was a varied amount of discussion. I felt that it was, you know, it was a high value add to be, um, to be in that meeting, um, and we were able to, you know, to be able to interface well across the community. The other, re <clears throat> the other reoccurring meeting that has started up is the Open Aquila Advisory Board. Um, also, could be viewed as like a steering committee. So the purpose here, I mean, it's um, when um, when open source projects are hosted in Aperio, Aperio likes to have a, a steering committee or an advisory board that can uh, can look at things at a higher level. You know, not necessarily just the technical details of where we want Aquila to go or where we want an application to go, but also to look at you know how do you maintain and enhance the community that's around this application. Uh, you know, maybe there are some technical issues that are more overriding that the advisory board um, would also be able to look at. Um, but they're not really for, you know, let's go ahead and make, you know, a technical change, but more how do we want to drive uh, the community adoption and is there any concerns in being able to um, have a voice for that. Uh, we're holding it every other meeting or every other month, and the kickoff meeting was in September. Um, I felt there was good energy from that meeting for the from the folks that were there, um, and we um, that kind of the overarching theme that came out is that we're really looking for deeper community involvement into the open and fellow platform. Uh, for the folks that um, may make up the advisory board at this time, is Alistair Oliver from Edelax, Anton Prop from the Swinebird, uh, myself from Unicon, Lee Webster from TAFE Queensland, Ian Dolphin. Um, who's the Aperio director, and then Mara Hancock from California College of the Arts. 
In terms of what we were able to cover in for sustaining engineering in Q3, we were able to enhance Aquello with some of the scripting API um, objects. So you can now, um, through the scripting API, you can have a control access its target XML node. And then um, you could also have, through the scripting API, um, you can traverse the XML structure to access its parent and its children. Uh, this came up through an open source subscriber um, ticket that uh, they weren't able to, they were trying to um, figure out how to make some, some uh, repeaters function in the way that they wanted to, you know, key off of a value. And since the script API was not in place, they weren't able to do that. And so we went ahead and enhanced that. So that is going to be in, um, in six, seven when that gets cut. In terms of other efforts that we did, um, we had some scripts that we were able to open source and it's, it's off the screen right here, but um, I just wanted to thank the adopters, the, um, you know, the, the folks that um, did projects with us, but we, we did a, like a custom script for them, or it was an open source subscriber um, that we also, you know, that we did some custom work for, and they were willing to let us open source that work so that the community could benefit from it. So thank you to, to those folks. Um, we have, and the links are here, so when we share the slides, you'll be able to access them, um, but they're all out on the Aquila GitHub um, project page. So there was a user display script, um, there was a check date script, and then we also started something called this Aquila Toolbox. And this is a, you can kind of view it as a prototype. It was putting an idea out there and we'll see if it sticks or if we want to change it. Um, what it can do right now is this Aquila Toolbox can migrate videos into Kaltura and it can also export resources as CSV. Um, EBI um, is, has a great wealth of functionality in it. Um, it's kind of older tech um, and at times difficult to build, not necessarily cross-platform um, in the sense of, you know, build once and then run anywhere. Um, and so it was kind of, you know, could we, could we re improve or replace that, um, the Aquila bulk importer technology, um, and then, you know, be, be rolling in this extra functionality. And so that's, that's out there. If you're interested in that kind of stuff and if you want to, um, put your voice out there and, and throw out some ideas. Uh, you know, it's having community involvement to drive that, that effort would be great. And we also worked on um, enhancing the Docker um, component of Aquella. So this doesn't really change how Aquella runs um, or how Aquella builds, but it's, it's really just a wrapper so you can, um, you can do consistent builds of Aquella in a Docker, container, and then you also have the ability to do a um, kind of a quick start install and then run Docker uh, or run Aquila inside Docker so you don't have to install all the dependencies. And we have a slide on that um, in a little bit that goes into a little bit more detail. Some other Q3 highlights, uh, what took up some, some more of our time, I mean, we were planning to do more sustaining engineering and then these issues came up and then so we, um, it was important for this focus, for the focus to change. Um, we have this, um, not we, one of the adopters of Aquella has discovered that the Blackboard integration with Open Aquella in the SAS version and with um, Blackboard version 3400 and above no longer works. Um, the, you cannot view links, you can't open up the Aquella selection session. Um, and looking at it, it looks, to be just that they're, the Blackboard um, team is making fundamental shifts in their platform, and obviously going to SAS, right? It's a different database. Um, there's APIs that, uh, that were used in the building block that were not public. And so some of those, they, Blackboard calls them private APIs, um, while available when you're building the building block, uh, didn't, um, they're no longer being supported. And so we're seeing loss of functionality here. Um, as a short-term uh, workaround or fix, there's efforts underway to fix viewing the links and then adding links 
um, through a selection session via the, the standard pull to LMS. And there's that link out there for the, the issue tracker if folks are interested in it. Long term, uh, we're looking to rely on the Blackboard LTI and REST APIs instead of building blocks and web services. Um, and this is an effort to um, future proof the integration. So, you know, SAS, um, with Blackboard SAS, I mean, they can be making updates whenever they want, right? And we don't want to have the integration fail all of a sudden because, you know, we're, we're using an API that needed to be deprecated or whatnot. So um, with this, and especially maybe at the end of the call, we can talk about this. If you're, if you're on Blackboard or looking to be on Blackboard um, and are looking to move on to SAS or a self-managed hosted version 3400 or more, um, seriously consider um, the impact that it will have to your institution at, um, you know, looking for community support on, to, you know, to, um, to gather some support to create this long-term fix, but also the short-term fix. Um, the short-term fix isn't going to have push to LMS functionality or find uses or manage external resources because those are, we view those as more secondary from the community voices that we've, we, you know, that have, um, that have let us know what their needs are. So if you have some needs in Blackboard um, that are not on here or they're not being addressed, please let us know. Uh, the other integration, uh, it's not really uh, an issue, but it's something that we notice in Canvas when you do a skinny selection session, which is uh, there's, there's two ways to do it. You can, you can um, set up an Aquila link inside of a Canvas assignment HTML editor, as well as you can, um, you can go directly off of the Canvas module and add a link via an external tool, and it brings up a selection session that looks fairly similar to the to the standard selection session. Uh, when you do those skinny selection sessions, um, you're logged into Aquella as a temporary user that starts with an uppercase LTI, um, and then it appears to be you know a random string of characters and not not the user you'd expect to be logged in as. Um, functionally, it all works, but it creates an inconsistency and there could be some questions. And so we, um, we investigated it. We have this, um, the link to the issue, which is in the Aquila repo. Um, and so we, we have the workaround and we also know, you know, what needs to be fixed. So we're looking at that, you know, in a future release of Aquila um, to be able to put that in. And so we won't have to worry about the workaround anymore. So looking ahead to the last quarter of 2018, we want to solidify the Docker work, uh, making it so people are comfortable with being able to consistently build Aquila and to, um, and to be able to use it as a quick start, right? I mean, um, folks like um, the, com the Moodle community, they have um, ways to get you up and running quickly. Uportal has that Uportal start where you can you know, download a very few things and you're up and running with a uPortal instance. And we wanna start getting there towards Aquella so folks can, can get in and check out, especially like the newer features that are coming out um, before they feel the need to upgrade like maybe their dev site. We wanna, um, we're open sourcing an example of how to modernize the, the 6.5 old UI theme, right? So there is that effort to uh, change the Google material or change the UI to Google material design um, and make it um, more, more responsive. Uh, but we also want to, if I could get whoever that is to mute themselves. Okay, thank you. Um, but if you're still using the old theme, which most of you probably are, um, and if you want just an example of how you can make it um, just a little more clean, um, then, then this would give you an example on how to do that. We're looking to um, to find a short term that short term fix that we talked about to the Blackboard issue. I mean, it's a production issue for for clients now. So we're we're looking. That's one of our um, higher priorities. Uh, we also have you know the, we're looking at the backlog, um, the priority of our backlog that we have. So our open source support clients help drive that. The script API was one of those things that came out of that backlog. So if there are issues that 
you know of or that you've um, submitted to us um, and you're an open source support client, please please shout out and, and help make that priority more accurate. And then just continued efforts to sunset the admin console um, while ensuring you know, user, user experience best practices um, going towards the Google material design interface. So let's take a minute and just talk about a feature highlight, right? I mean, 6.4 QA3 was the last commercial version. There are um, several high value add benefits to, to upgrading to uh, 6.5. One, you know, is if you are a um, a new adopter to Aquila, you can't get 6.4 QA3, you know, and this is the first version you have available. There's several folks out there that are still on 6.4, and the question might come up, well, why why would I care about going to 6.5 um, or, you know, or 6.6? And so this is just one of the um, one of the reasons. And And so with workflow scripting, this was added in, Script execution now, you can you can specify a script and it's set up as, as you can view it as like a first order workflow task. So instead of having a task where a moderator comes in and they, you know, it gets dropped into their tasks list and they get a notification, the resource will actually enter into this workflow task that is, is really just a script. And this is consistent with the mindset or, or the, you know, the programming behind Aquella of you should be able to customize pretty much any part of your experience with the CMS. And so this handles that deeper customization of moder moderation. In that task, you're able to configure users to be notified when a scripting error occurs. And you can also configure users to be notified on scripting success. Um, it allows a soft fail, which essentially means it will just drop out of the, the scripting workflow task and move on to the next task if your scripting um, causes an error for some reason. And this scripting is the, um, you know, the scripting that we know and love from the expert save scripts and the, the advanced scripting control. So it's this JavaScript syntax with available backend objects via the scripting API. And I have go ahead and um, I linked it there. Talking about a process highlight, I wanted to, to note Docker again. I mean, Docker is, it seems, it's lots of people know about Docker, right? And so if you have, um, if you have the desire to go ahead and take a look at um, what we've built so far with Docker, right, what the community has built, and you have, you know, enhancements that you could offer, please submit a pull request and, and help make this, this process better. Right now, um, the default Docker file takes a, an installer zip of a qu open Aquila and it will install it inside the container and then you can go ahead and run it from that container. Hi. Other I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for interrupting. This is Conrad. Hello. Hey. Last time we, we discussed about this, you, you recommended not to use Docker. Um, indeed, we, we, at that time, we had our only installation was actually Docker, and we moved out of Docker. Is that right? Or I missed something. At, yeah, at this time, Docker hasn't been used, to my knowledge, in a production setting, so I would not recommend that yet. Um, it doesn't mean that Docker could not be used. It would just more testing would be needed. Um, at this point, the reason I'm highlighting Docker now is that um, it's, it's set up enough that you can do quick starts of, of just trying out open Aquila features and also to, to actually build the installer zip and the upgrade zip for, um, for open Aquila through Docker. So, um, you know, earlier when we were talking about Docker, this work hadn't uh, really been completed. Um, and, and as well as it hasn't been vetted enough that I would feel comfortable saying using that, use that default Docker file in a production setting, not yet. But if you look at the documentation um, in the pull request that's been opened, um, that's one of the future goals is to make it available in, in a production setting. Did that answer your question? Yeah, sure. So nothing changed from last time? Uh, not for the production setting, no, not yet. Okay, good. All right, thank you. Uh, so as noted, there's a PR a pull request opened that 
we're working through. And then once we push that, that will be available on, or once we merge it, that will be available on the master branch of Aquella. Um, and like I said, comments and improvements are welcome. Right? Um, lots of different ideas on how to use Docker and how to make it uh, more useful for the community, and those are welcome. All right, so I'd like to turn the time over to Jonathan Sweeten um, to, uh, for our community spotlight of his AI or search at NC Lauren. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, again, I'm Jonathan Sweeten. Uh, I've been the assistant admin for uh, North Carolina Learning Object Repository for um, quite some time. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to uh, show you a little bit today. I mentioned it, I think, before, but give you a little quick demo of where we are. Uh, we're still in early stages, but I got a uh, kind of a working wireframe to show to you uh, just to kind of get your creative juices flowing uh, about what we're doing in North Carolina with artificial intelligence and machine learning. So uh, those of you, can you move on to the next slide for me? Um, all right. Um, so some of this is a presentation I actually just did for our system conference uh, and what our idea is to create a, a North Carolina brain which is um, basically a you know open source machine algorithms that's going to look at um, uh, all of our content throughout variety of things uh, go ahead Chris uh, and kind of bring it back in uh, for both for multiple applications to look at. But, you know, those of you who don't know that what machine learning is, it's basically, it's, you know, it's an AI that helps, um, you know, helps it learn without doing hand coding. So we see AI, we see machine learning everywhere. We see machine learning in, you know, driver cars, uh, Siri, Cortana, uh, Alexa, um, it's just a way, in essence, for our, you know, in our equality terms, is to how do we get our data sources smarter without going in and doing, you know, a bunch of hand tagging <clears throat> to a bunch to uh, resources in order to to show correlation. Uh, of course, you know, we have our native search that you know searches by you know, title, uh, it, but it's relatively limited and, and it's, you know, and it was not bad, but go really Google has, has uh, spoiled our users a lot about how the search functionality should work. So go ahead, Chris. Um, our project that we're, 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 we're working on is it's, it's a research project. So we're kind of uh, uh, discovering things as we go. Um, but we're working with our virtual learning community, which has a bunch of uh, content with inside of our Equella repository, so that we can make uh, recommendation on learning resources based on a variety of things. Uh, go ahead, Chris. Um, the one thing we did decide was uh, that we needed to uh, start kind of small. Um, you know, machine learning projects can get out of hand really fast. Uh, so what we wanted to do was to say, okay, what, what can we do that will directly benefit our students, our faculty, and staff? Um, and one thing we said, well, how do we, how do we make our search results better? Uh, and how to, can we easily uh, involve faculty uh, in curation, or curation of that resource? Not creation, but also curation. How do we, how do we um, enable them to help us make that those connections better uh, go ahead so hey pick our low-hanging fruit the, our our equal application was where we wanted to start um, it had a one of the reasons why we took it was because um, we had a lot of it is text-based with uh, metadata that's already available um, and we already have integrated um, colleges with our learning management system North Carolina has around uh, 56 integrated colleges on our, in our in our system so they all use their different learning management system so we already have those integrations set up so we can get down to the to the student all right go ahead Chris um, so what we were looking for is improvements for our developers 
would be that it would enhance their search to better align the titles, the descriptions, and learning outcomes. We'd help our faculty by giving them more ease of use uh, from Google to make it more Google and Amazon-like and, and functionality. And of course, and help our college staff because we have some of our student information system uses that for documents uh, uh, to, to go along with how to use our, our system and we can do you know, cross-functional correlation. So what does all that kind of mean? Uh, go ahead, Chris. Um, we, we decided to do, you know, uh, two phases. Uh, our first phase was to create um, an interface and connect it to um, a wireframe uh, that would give us an idea of what it would look like and to develop a roadmap, how to uh, implement the brain. And, and we'll start, and we started with the Aquella instance. Uh, and go ahead, Chris. And, um, we, we did that. Um, what we ended up doing was we decided to make a, a relatively, um, you know, unobtrusive kind of, uh, you know, presence to Aquella. Uh, we, we added these little icons to the upper left of every title. And when you, and it looks like a little brain and whenever you click on that brain, uh, go ahead, Chris. Uh, it, it slides open and it's and, and it slides open it says find similar so the machine learning algorithm will go in and find similar items to the to the one item that you uh, hit the brain on and you'll see, see them displayed below um, the we decided to you know kind of go uh, as, as minimum we didn't want to be too you know intrusive with it but those brains would appear on any item. So we would have, um, you know, you might have more than, you know, one item show, show up across your search results. But we made that interface so lightweight that uh, it is, uh, it loads really, you know, really fast. Uh, there's, you don't have to worry about, you know, load time whenever you would connect to it. Go ahead, Chris. So here's the video. and Hopefully you can see it. It's a little fuzzy. Um, I'm worried about it being fuzzy. So you can see the functionality there. It, what, what we're doing is um, that we'll be able to filter our results based on faculty recommendations um, and machine learning recommendations. Uh, and we'll be able, to, we'll also be able to then link in other applications as well. So, so we would have API hooks that go out to you know, somebody using a Drupal site or, or, or something like that and bring, bring that in um, through their brain as well. Uh, we also added uh, similar items on the item summary page is what you see right here. Uh, and, it, and it loads and it would make a call back to the, to the brain to load new items um, anywhere you see that little brain icon. Uh, so go ahead, Chris. Let me go ahead and move to the next one. So our interface kind of looked like this. Um, it opens up that little window and it gives me, it gives you a, um, you know, it, I think it defaults to five items that closely co correlate to the title that you selected on. Um, it gives you the ability to add tags underneath the course description or, or the item description. So you can quickly filter the, anything based on the tags. So if it's your course name, if it's a, uh, you know, subject or whatever, you can have, you can add those title, those little tags underneath those little boxes uh, there on number two. Um, now the similar and, and the yes, uh, number three says similar, no, and yes. What those are is, is audience participation. Uh, that's how you get faculty to, um, and uh, uh, folks to say, hey, does, is this similar to, uh, uh, the item that you clicked on, yes or no. You know, this helps us teach the, keep teaching the brain, keep teaching the machine learning algorithm to make tighter correlation based on user suggestions. Um, and of course, you know, if we've got an you know, errant person that just, you know, keeps clicking no, 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 we have, we have ways to kind of, you know, move it back to, move it back right um, behind the scenes. So you can't have, you know, one, person kind of 
kibosh your results. Um, of course, we built some help um, sections on there and on number four. Uh, it, it rolls through and tells you what to do on each one. Um, but whenever you hit the, um, the more button on, the, on number five over there, it'll load. It brings up another five items um, that, that, are, that is correlated to the actual one actual item that you selected uh, the more button on. So it's kind of a, you go down the rabbit hole a little bit. It reduces the number of clicks that you need if you were just had this natively in Aquila. Um, it brings it to a point where there's, this is our first step in um, making profiles for faculty. So, um, you know, our end goal would be, uh, hey, good, you know, when they log in either through the Equella interface or whatever interface they're coming in, you know, good morning, John Smith. Looks like you're teaching philosophy today. Uh, and this week's, you know, uh, subject is Descartes. Here's some Descartes information from you from Aquila. That's, that's where we're going. This is our first, this is our baby step on how to get there. Go ahead, Chris. So we've, uh, luckily, our integration with, um, well, older Blackboard and Moodle, um, it's porting through just fine. So we would be able to load that content directly into um, the, uh, using the straight uh, building blocks that we currently have to get it directly down uh, to students. So it, it's a way to, you know, not have to change gears, pick a new product, uh, you know, try, we can add machine learning to a currently existing uh, application uh, and not disrupt the uh, information flow. I think the next one is, go ahead one more, is the Moodle integration. So it looks pretty much the same. Uh, same functionality, the, the, the plus button appears just like it should normally, um, and, but it, it gives the faculty um, quicker access to like items. Um, okay, go ahead. Um, and our final phase is uh, to connect our, our wireframe to the actual brain, an actual, the, we're gonna, um, and what that's gonna mean is take all of our content, get text uh, versions of all of our content, uh, including videos. Um, so, you know, we have closed captions. It, it, we feed that into the algorithm. The algorithm spits us back out um, uh, a, uh, a little uh, uh, API hook that we hook the, the little, that little drop-down um, thing to. Uh, and also we have uh, a phase where we're trying to, you know, connect um, the Aquila back to the uh, the AI brain so that it will update as as we go. So it makes the Aquila system better by its uh, calculations. That's it. Without going into too much more about uh, you know how the you know, the back end is going to work because it's honestly it's a little bit above my head. <laughs> But I wanted to bring it to you to show, you know, we're, we're kind of moving forward on, on uh, uh, applying some, some modern machine learning uh, uh, applications uh, to Aquila. Thank you, John. That uh -huh. was exciting to hear. Um, all right. So for upcoming events for Open Aquila, there's going to be an Open Aquila webinar that will be online um, on the 25th of October. And so watch. Um, watch email and Twitter uh, for, uh, for information on that. Uh, Educause, there will be, Unicorn will be there, um, and I believe Edelux will be there as well. Um, so if you have a couple of questions, um, please go and see, um, see the folks in the community on that. That will be in Denver um, at, towards the end of October, the 31st through November 2nd. Our next Open Aquila Community Dev Meeting will be um, online uh, the 1st of November for U.S. folks, and then the um, morning of November 2nd for Australia and that region of the globe. And like I said, anyone is welcome to join that has an interest in helping to develop um, Open Aquila. Um, the next open source support briefing, um, so that will cover Q4. 
That will be in January, um, and that was a typo. I'll fix that before we send these slides out. January of 2019. Um, the Edel Expo, um, this is a plug for our friends down in Australia, a, um, a conference in Melbourne um, on the 15th of November. And then mark your calendars uh, for next summer, Open Aperio 2019. Um, and we'll be talking about all things open source, right? So if you're interested in Open Quella or other um, platforms such as uPortal, um, that is that is a place to go to be able to meet with the developers and like-minded folks to be able to, um, to share ideas and get excited about open source software. That'll be in Los Angeles um, from the 2nd to the 6th of June. And with that, um, this is the way to get involved in the community. Um, take a look at the Aperio Open Aquella website. Uh, some good information there. Um, kind of gives you an overview of what Open Aquella is. We have our mailing list, which seems to be the most, um, the most active way for folks to, to ask questions to the community. We have a dev list and then a, a users list. There's a Slack channel um, for Open Aquella. There's also the GitHub issues tracker for the Aquila project. Uh, that's how we track bugs and enhancements um, in Open Aquila. So you don't have to be an open source support subscriber to with Unicon to go ahead and put in an issue. Um, if you are an open source subscriber, feel free to just open a ticket with us, and we can uh, we can help um, set up that issue with some you know some verbiage around there to make it easier for the community to, um, to actually work on. And then of course we have our, the Twitter handle as well. So with that, are there any questions? And feel free to unmute yourself if you wanna just ask it verbally or in the chat. Uh, so can we download the slides somewhere? Yes, um, once, um, We'll, we'll upload these slides to SlideShare, and then um, we'll post it out on the Unicon blog, and there will be a link to the slides, as well as the recording. Okay. I had a question for you, John, about okay. the, the machine learning. Um, do you make any use of the, of the Aquila metadata that, I mean, so you can customize metadata in Aquila? And that's the way that you tag content in Aquila. Is there a connection between that metadata and this this brain, or is it separate? Yes and no. We're we're still just getting to that. Um, but what I understand is what we're going to use the metadata, in essence, like for is to train the brain to make quicker correlations between the text based. Um, um, resources. So we, in essence, kind of give the, the metadata higher importance um, to, to any individual items. So, so we can say, hey, algorithm, um, this is a subject or this is a course number. This, it, you know, it will make its um, groupings as it goes through and, and, and does its um, algorithm and make those uh, connections faster because the metadata will be there. Um, so it's not just going to be looking at metadata. It's also going to be parsing attachments. So if, it, if a, an item, you know, text appears inside of a Word document or a PDF or a, you know, text file or, you know, um, you know, uh, closed captions, it's going to take, it's going to get into that too. So uh, those those metadata um, items will apply to those, therefore help um, the machine learning algorithm quickly make connect connections as it processes. Uh, it, it takes a while for it to spin. I mean, it 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 chug it chugs on it for quite a while, um, and anything you can do to kind of help. Um, but then you know uh, it might give you something that you don't expect. You, you can say, okay, hey, you know, there's there's um, you know, some connections between uh, uh, your math c content and English language arts, uh, stuff that you don't, you weren't, you didn't have before. So, uh, so it'll help your metadata by making those connections that a person just can't do because they can't, you know, look for those, those patterns. 
Yeah, I think that right. I if that's that you, what you're asking. No, it, it, yeah, that was that answered it. Thank you. All right. Um, and if I could put you on a, on the spot for a minute, are you are you considering or are you able to open source the uh, the code for the uh, integration? I am more than willing to open source the um, the connections. You know, the hook and and how we did it. We we've, we've we've written kind of a white paper already uh, on how we we work with the interface. Um, I'm I'm more concerned about the company that we're with. Uh, and how open they are to the idea. I, I know that they're fine with the sharing the algorithms because it's open source algorithms, I believe, but I think they do some special things to make the th to make it run faster. And I don't, I'm not sure how, um, you know, how, how much they're going to be, uh, uh, you know, open for that. Uh, but I, I think that's, it's a yes and a no. Uh, I think we'll, you know, get as give as much as we can back to the community. Um, I don't have a problem with it, and I'll, you know, kind of send it up the chain. Um, and you know, we're a government institution, so there's no, um, you know, there's no proprietary, you know, rules don't apply necessarily to what we're doing. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, as soon as we got uh, a kind of a kind of a working kind of model. Um, and making it, we'll get right now. We're we're halfway through. We're halfway there, and as soon as we uh, get all the way, I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll bring it back to the group. Excellent. I'm excited to see that come into the community. Cool. Any other questions? Well, yes. Uh, this is Amalia from Illumina. We're just joining the the community, and I would like to ask something to John. Uh, John, this algorithm that you were mentioning before um, that you guys have developed, it, is it uh, related to the metadata schema that you guys choose? It is applied just to one of them or what I how th does it work? Well, it, a lot of that's a little complicated. It's a lot of math, honestly, as far as how, how the algorithm works and you're asking the wrong guy. Uh, that's why we partnered with. Uh, well, I, I don't want to know details. I yeah. just wanted to know if it's applied to some special metadata schema. R yes, it, it does, and it what will it will do is um, the plan is is we annex basically we make a text copy of everything that we have. That text copy in our case happens to be XML metadata from um, the items inside of Aquila. Uh, but it's not just that, you know, it would be text versions of all attachments. And it's put into a big honking, you know, database that is basically, you know, if you want to think of it as a big, long text file, uh, okay? And it, the algorithm goes through and looks at like text words and comes up with concepts and ideas not just tags, you know, like ideas of these things go together. And the, what the metadata does is, okay, it tells the algorithm, these things are more important than others. The metadata um, tags values. Um, our subjects are more important than what you might find somewhere else. These things should be priority versus what you might find inside of a, um, uh, an attachment. So it, it starts to, it makes those, think of it like grouping, you know, you've got a bunch of, um, you know, you know, M&Ms, right? And, and they're all in a pile. And what the machine learning will do will say, okay, it starts to separate out uh, green, green, orange, red, red, orange, brown. It starts to do it for you. Um, but if it doesn't know what a green M&M is, then that's what you have to teach it first. So that's where our metadata helps. It says it's a round thing and it's got a candy coating shell, therefore, and the, the color is green. That's what metadata is. That's what the metadata is going to do. Thank so it you. helps kind of organize that stuff faster. That's, this is about a, about a simplified version. <laughs> At least I can make it anyway. It's very clear. Thank you. Sure. I mean, and, and honestly, if you think about it, it's exactly what the administrator or your wizard does, right? It, it prioritizes your tags. 
this just sets an algorithm free to go in and find those things for you. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Uh, uh, instead of having to actually, you know, type them in, this helps, you know, in case you get it wrong, which, you know, that never happens that someone would miscalculate or, or mis mis uh, uh, classify an object or anything like that. All right, good discussion. Any other uh, final questions? All right, well, I appreciate folks' attendance, uh, especially for John for presenting on that. The slides will be made available, the slides and the recording with a, uh, a blog write-up uh, will be posted on the Unicon blog site. Um, and then we will send out um, a link to that when it's available as kind of a reply um, on the Google users group. Thank you much.